Brian Pate here. Let's take a look at our putter rail with our Capto unit. So I'm going to roll a golf ball off this yardstick here and we'll take a look at the data that it's going to give me. So after that one went off the end, the first tiles we're looking at it from the main screen, it's going to say average sweet spot. So throughout the stroke, how much different was the sweet spot compared to the natural pendulum motion of a putting stroke? The next one is the top shaft. How much different was this compared to something that would be freely swinging in space? So if I click on the putter rail, the first one's going to have is the target direction. And as I scroll through this, I'll go to transition. and pause it right there. What it's saying is the sweet spot was roughly 2.4 inches further away from the target than the ideal stroke would be. The top of the grip was 1.6 inches away from it. So if I put this down real quick for a visual, let's just say this was connected to the middle of my sweet spot. And it could be rotating around the butt of the club if we just have a wristy motion. It could be more sternum. It could be up higher. But if I was just letting this swing naturally and it was connected to my sternum, that putter was saying that the putter head and the shaft were a little bit more to the right than kind of the ideal swinging of the putter. Let me pick this up again and say, okay. And then coming back into impact, everything caught back up and at impact the sweet spot was zero and the top of the shaft was minus 0.2 so pretty much neutral so everything got back to where it would want to be on this natural slinging putter so let's click on this and take a look at the front direction we're going to scroll through here this one doesn't have a lot of motion but what that is is from down the line if I had this swinging in space again for our visual, we're going to call this our natural little pendulum motion. What that's saying is, was the handle in the sweet spot a little bit more inwards or outwards from that natural motion? So as we look at the transition, it's going to say the sweet spot was minus 0.6, so it moved slightly inwards. And on the bottom right, you're going to see some arrows. So the yellow graph is a yellow arrow tied to the top of the grip. The blue line is tied to a blue arrow in the putter head. And it's saying at transition, the sweet spot was inwards a little bit and the shaft moved inwards a little bit. At impact, what we'll see here is the sweet spot got back out to where it was. So that's going to be more of a solid strike. If it, the sweet spot stayed inwards, it might be a toe strike. If the sweet spot was more outwards, it could be a heel strike. And then the top of the shaft was still inwards. So if I was making that motion, so you could see here, is the putter face moved a little bit inwards, the shaft moved a little bit inwards. On the way through, the putter grip stayed in the same spot, but the sweet spot moved back out to the target line. Now, if we click on front direction and go to the up direction, there's not a lot of motion in this guy, but this is, if I just use my, hin my wrist a lot and hinged it, this putter face, let me put down the iPad and hold this out here. If this was my normal pendulum, this is how high the putter head would want to swing. But if I use my wrist a bunch, what you can see is it's a lot higher than the bottom of the alignment rod right here. I could also take the top of the grip and rise up or move it backwards and keep the head in the same spot. So this is all three-dimensional stuff, but it's giving us some ideas of what's going on through the stroke. Let me put one stroke on here and we'll take a look at it. Just makes one that's different. Just so we can see. So on this one, I'm going to feel like the handle moves a lot on the way back and it doesn't move much on the way through. So I'm going to let 
the top of the handle drift to the right and not drift back. And we'll take a quick little look through here. So from the target direction, that's gonna be looking down the target. Did the head move too far back, the handle move too far back? What you'll see is there's a sharp dip on both of them, which the handle moved 5.2 inches farther right than the natural pendulum motion. And as I did that, the sweet spot also moved as well. As I came into impact, the sweet spot was back to its natural pendulum into the center of my body or wherever this putter's rotating around, but the grip was still behind 4.9 inches. If we go to the up direction, as I did that from down the line view, the putter head moved in and the grip moved in in the backstroke and then they both kind of move back out in the downstroke. And as we take a look at the next one, the up direction, now you can see both the putter head and the grip were going higher than the natural motion that this putter would want to work on for the calculations. So you can just see there with a little demonstration on how some of this stuff can move around and what some of the tiles mean and how it references if a robot was slinging this putter, what the putter natural rotation and motions would be without us as humans manipulating the putter shaft, the grip, and the putter head relative to that perfect stroke.